Good morning, Bioneers. How's everybody feeling this morning? Well, it is a joy and an honor to be with you this morning, and I am so excited um, to learn with you at this gathering. Um, and I wanted to start by introducing you to my grandmother, um, because I am first and foremost a proud granddaughter. Uh, my grandmother is 87 years old, and she lives in Southern California. And she um, lives in her own home and apartment. And she uh, goes to church twice a week. She walks around the block twice per day for exercise. Um, she sees her friends for afternoon tea. She plays mahjong. In fact, you probably don't want to play mahjong with her because she will ruin you. <laughs> um, and she has a really dignified quality of life. And she's able to do all of these things because she's supported by a wonderful caregiver, caregiver named Mrs. Sun, who comes to her home and helps her cook and clean and whatever she needs in order to support her quality of life. Um, and my grandmother taught me most things in life that are important to me. Um, everything from potty training to my most core values. And one of the values that she really emphasized was the importance of really appreciating the people in our lives who take care of us. Because those caregiving relationships, those relationships of care, are life's greatest gift. And so in that spirit, I'd like for you to turn to um, a person sitting next to you, preferably somebody you don't know, but if you know everyone sitting next to you, that's fine. And we're going to actually take a couple of minutes. And what I'd like for you to do is um, share with the person sitting next to you a story of someone in your life who takes care of you or who you take care of, because we both, we are always in both of those roles. Um, so, and, and talk about, share a story about the value of that relationship in your life. And so I'll give you about uh, a minute and a half each, even though there's a lot more to say, and I'll let you know when you should switch to the other person to share, okay? Is everybody ready for this exercise? Okay. Back together. So how about the caring relationships in our lives? Let's give a round of applause to all the people who take care of us and make our lives possible every day. I also stand before you as an organizer of domestic workers. And every morning, in towns, villages, and cities around the country, millions of women get up hours before the rest of us every day so that they can get to our homes to work on time. And they take care of our children um, and our aging loved ones. They do the work that makes all of their work possible. And despite the important role they play in our families and in our homes, they are some of the most vulnerable workers in the workforce today excluded from basic labor rights. They're essentially working under highly vulnerable and unpredictable conditions. Like Thelma Reta, who works as an elder caregiver in Los Angeles, taking care of an elderly couple, 12-hour days, $35 a day. Or like Maria, who cared for a child with a disability and did all of the housekeeping, cooking, cleaning, ironing, washing for a family of six, working live-in six days a week, 14 to 16 hour days for less than $3 an hour. Unfortunately, these stories are quite common because it's like the Wild West. You may have a wonderful employer or you may have the whole other end of the spectrum and there's nothing mediating that relationship. 
And um, fortunately, Thelma and Maria and thousands of women all across the country are starting to organize and come together, and we are winning. We're winning respect and recognition, and we're passing labor laws, um, like the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights in New York. And this year, we also passed a Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights in the state of California. And unfortunately, Governor Brown vetoed the legislation three weeks ago, so we have to let him know how we feel about that. But we're not giving up. We're going to keep fighting, and we're going to win. We are going to win. And not only are we going to win in California, but in Massachusetts and Illinois, and we won't stop building this movement until there's respect and recognition for every worker in this country. Yes. And a few years ago, we started getting requests from our members for training in elder care. Because many of them, even though they were originally hired as nannies or housekeepers, they were suddenly being called upon to take care of the aging relatives of their employers. Maybe their employer's aunt got, uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, or someone had a stroke, and they suddenly had to help with that care. And they didn't feel prepared to do that work. And it was such a pattern that we decided to take a step back and understand what was happening in the country that this was starting to happen so much. And what we realized is that domestic workers are on the front lines of a tremendous demographic shift in this country, where on the one hand, immigrant communities are growing, and on the other hand, we are aging as a country at a rate of a person every eight seconds turning 65 in America today. 10,000 people per day four million people per year turn 65 in America. We're about to have the largest older adult population in the history of the country, and by, by the year 2050, 27 million Americans will need caregivers just to meet their basic daily needs. Well, you might think that this is gonna be a huge problem. Well, we think that this is the opportunity we've all been waiting for. And the story begins at home. Home is where the heart is. Home is where we find our sense of security and our original sense of belonging. Home is also increasingly becoming a source, a place of stress and pain and suffering as we worry about how we're going to take care of our aging loved ones. We worry about how we're going to afford it. And we think about what's going to happen to us. And we know that nursing homes are not the answer. And so we have to figure out these problems, but we don't know what to do. And we don't have support and resources, and we're struggling in isolation. And not only that, but when you take a step back, it's not only us individually in our households, but it's a country that's suffering in silence, isolated around this need and this lack of care in this country. And layered on top of that, we're living in the worst economy in generations. There's a per persistent jobs crisis out there where millions of Americans don't have work and are in search of jobs, unable to pay the bills. So, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, it feels sometimes, but when there's so many of us affected by the same issues, it creates the basis for real solutions and coming together. And some of our most profound solutions have been found in the most obvious places. And we believe that we as a country can come together just like we have generation after generation to come up with the solutions that we need to improve quality of life for ourselves and our families. And it begins right at home. Where we've figured out a way to bring telephones and internet into every home across the country so that we can now communicate with our families across long distances and sometimes around the world now. And we figured out a way to bring water, running water into every home where we can actually take care of our health and hygiene, 
Through an intricate system of irrigation and pipes, we've figured out the solution to this water issue. And we think that we can bring care to every home in this country to support all of our needs, to be able to live with dignity. But we know that this system is not going to be based off of pipes or waterways or, or wires. It's going to be a system based in relationships. And all of us are, um, all of us have caring relationships in our lives. We've just shared stories about those relationships. And we know that the most uh, impactful, important rela caring relationships in our lives are the ones that have an essential ingredient in them. And that is respect. Rooted in respectful relationships, we can create a, a system to bring care into every single home. Just like my grandmother deserves a dignified quality of life, so does Mrs. Sun. She deserves to know the true value of her work. She deserves a living wage with benefits. She deserves real pathways to economic opportunity and the ability to support and care for her own family. A system based in respect and relationship, bringing care to every home. And once we do that, which we know we can because we've done it so many times before, we will not only create the ability to, to support every single person in this country to live with dignity and respect, but we will also, uh, we will also be able to create millions and millions of dignified jobs and pathways to real opportunity for home care workers. But how do we get there? That's right, something to clap about. How do we get there? Well, we have just launched a campaign called Caring Across Generations to bring all of us together across generation, race, class, um, in immigration uh, status, across all the different experiences that make up the beautiful country that we are to build a movement to create a more caring economy and to create all the elements of that support and that system based in relationships of respect that we need to create the jobs that we need, to create the economy that we need, and create the opportunity and care that we need. We're bringing women together, people with disabilities, seniors, people who are going to need care and supports, and their families, together with domestic workers and home care workers and all of our families, to create a brilliant movement for care and a caring economy that works for everyone. And we've got real policy solutions. We're in an election year, and I'm sure all of you are following what's happening politically. Well, there are real solutions that our elected officials can move on right away to start moving us towards this vision. We can create two million new quality jobs in home care to support all of the aging and people with disabilities to be able to live at home in their communities with dignity and to be able to provide real opportunity, economic opportunity, for millions of home care workers and domestic workers around the country. We can create those jobs, and we can make care more affordable to everyone, for everyone who needs it. We can create tax credits for people who are paying out of pocket for care. We can expand the way that Medicare covers long-term care. We can reorganize the system towards more support for home and community-based care, which is less expensive. There are real solutions that are actionable today by our elected leaders. And we can create pathways to real opportunity for the millions of care workers who are doing this work through establishing training and pathways to citizenship for the immigrant care workforce. That's right. The solutions are right in front of us. And what we need to do is build a movement. And so my grandmother and I today are inviting all of you to join us 
in caring across generations and building the movement we need to create the caring economy that we need so that it works for all of us and makes sure that each of us can have a dignified quality of life. And that means helping us change the hearts and minds to move us away from a politics of austerity towards a politics of caring. Help us create technology-based solutions that can support improved job quality for the workforce and ac improved access to care for people who need it and for families who are searching. Help us contact our local Congress members and let them know that care jobs are a solution to the jobs crisis. Many of us are already calling for green jobs and climate jobs. Well, why not add care jobs to the solution? People are coming together in communities around the country, forming care councils, bringing intergenerational communities together to help build this movement, and we hope that you'll join us. And I want to also just close by saying that 20 years ago, Gloria Steinem wrote an article called Revaluing Economics. And in that article, she talks about the two invisible resources upon which everything else in the economy and society is built. The planet's natural resources and the caregiving work that goes into bringing life into being and to raising families as the two invisible resources that make everything else possible. And over time, we as a society have devalued and made invisible and exploited those two core resources. And not only has that led us towards the crisis that we're facing ahead of us in the economy and in the sustainability of the planet, but we've also lost our compass. We've devalued what matters most. But we can change course. We can bring value and protection and dignity to the things that matter the most. And this is about that revaluing economics agenda. So I want to leave you with the words of Alice Walker's poem, We Alone. This could be our revolution to love what is plentiful as much as what is scarce. Thank you.